guess it's determination. I've always been a sporty person and always, I'm very determined and very competitive. So I guess I just put my, when I want to do it, I guess I've got the attitude of um, why do it later when you can do it now. My classification is a T42, so which is an above knee amputee, and my disciplines are 100 metres and long jump. I train seven days a week, so Monday to Sunday. I drive, unfortunately I train about two hours away from where I live, so I drive every day to training. I train probably around three to four hours a day. I do four track sessions a week, three gym sessions and a pool session. I would be able to do things without my coach Tim Matthews. I think he plays a massive, massive part in my life and I rely on him. You have to trust him 100% and listen to what he does and he tells you to do. And He's there every day at training and I have full utmost um, confidence in him. And He was an ex-Paralympian and he's one of um, my heroes I look up to as well. And It's just it's a massive part to have trust in it and to trust your coach and to trust what you're doing. And every day turn up to the track and enjoy what you're doing as well and he makes my training enjoyable. The athlete has to have belief in what the coach is doing. Um, and if I can't instil that belief, then it makes it difficult for her to prepare well. She was a little bit worried about where she was at and I, and I went through the preparation and I explained exactly why we were there. And we were still playing around a little bit with the setup of her leg, the componentry of her leg and the alignment. Um, so once we sorted all that out and um, she started to taper, her times came down really quickly. She's jumping further, so now obviously she has the belief that she belongs here and, and can win medals, so that's, that's important. This is my running prosthesis and this is my walking leg. Um, the difference is my walking leg has a computer in it which I need to charge every night and it does a lot of the walking for me so I don't have to put so much effort into my walking. Uh, the foot and the knee are aligned so every step that I take um, it walks for me and, and predicts my other leg and walks like my other leg. This is a completely different setup. It's got a hydraulic knee with obviously you can see there's a plus and a minus and what happens is I and my prothodist mark how fast and how slow my leg comes through. Um, it has a carbon fibre J as a foot, so it's obviously not set up like a rubber foot like my walking leg and this I get a lot of spring out and it mimics my like a running style. Uh, I guess the difference is as well, I put, I put a liner on here and it stays on with a suction kind of type and this one is a liner with a pin and so I can lock it in so there's no way when I'm running it can come out. And also um, I cut my pair of spikes, so I wear a spike on my left foot and on my right foot they cut the bottom of the spike off and I can put the spikes in the bottom of my leg. months leading up to the competition is a lot tougher than probably my usual training and then you taper off and you take it more seriously. I see a sports psychologist, I see all that and you just get a little bit more extra and you talk with your coach about the things that you've got to remember that you've done in the past and like they say that when you get to a competition all the work's done so you've got to trust what you've done and don't change anything until you get there. She can run really fast times and jump a long way and if other girls can do better than that that's good luck to them but um, they're going to have to do pretty well I think to beat Kelly in London. The Paralympics um, definitely deserves to be known to be out there and, and it is a wonderful thing and if not um, more amazing than the Olympics because look at the wonderful things that all these people with disabilities are doing.